If you're like me and you miss the latest Home Assistant releases because you're away for the holidays, then in this video I'm going to recap my personal best features of the last Home Assistant releases. The fifth favourite feature of the list is copy and paste. A copy and paste was first released in automations and scripts. That meant that when you created an automation, you could copy and paste parts of the actions or of the trigger. Now, this also got rolled out to dashboards and you can even do it inside the nested cards. Another feature I love about cards is teleporting. This is where you can change the card position and you can see like a number one or number two or number three and then you can swap around the cards by just changing the number in this little dialogue. Now, we're getting close to drag and drop, but drag and drop is the feature that we are all looking for and aspiring to get. The fourth feature in this list is image entities. The image entity allows you to display a static image on your dashboard. This is quite similar to the camera entity, but the camera entity will display a live feed of a camera. The best use case for this card is to display a QR code for your guest network. I'm actually going to implement this feature in my Fully Kiosk tablet that's wall mounted. because That's going to be super useful because if someone wants to join the guest network, they can just scan a QR code and pair their device. Also, we need to bear in mind that a camera entity is quite heavy weight on the system because it has to stream this live dashboard, whereas if we have a image entity, that's going to be a lot more lightweight. Third home assistant feature in the list services can now respond. So what does this actually mean? So services are the things that we use in Home Assistant to change lights or open doors. So it's normally a one-way communication where we are instructing one of our smart home devices to do something. But what Home Assistant devs have allowed us to do is, to, is for the service to respond with data so we can give us back some information after we've sent that service out. So we can use this information to check the calendar to list events and we can get that information back as data back into Home Assistant. So this is actually quite groundbreaking in the way Home Assistant architecture works. The second best feature on this list is sentence triggers. This is part of a branch of new features called Assist. So Assist is a dialogue, it's a chatbot basically that you can use to interact with Home Assistant to allow it to turn lights on or ask questions or do things. Now, a sentence that you type in in the dialogue can be used as a trigger. And with the latest release, you can actually use wildcards to format your response. So an example that Home Assistant gives is you can have a sentence that says, play, this album or play this song by this artist. And then instead of specifying exactly hard coding it and having automations every single time, actually you can have a wildcard in that setup in that way. Let me know in the comment section down below how you are currently using sentences and how you're interacting with Assist. I'm curious to know. And also, if you're enjoying this video, remember to like and subscribe to the channel. A quick notable mention. If English isn't your first language, now more and more of Home Assistant is actually translated in your local language. Services were one of the few things that weren't translated and they will be as part of this latest release. You can still contribute to uh, the link. There will be a link in the description somewhere and you can actually contribute even if you're not a developer and helping them out with the translations in your local language. So my favorite feature is event entities. This is a, a bit of a game changer for me. If you've used Home Assistant for a while, you will know that certain events like a doorbell trigger, for example, on the Nest, hello, or a Philips Hue remote control, these normally trigger events. So events were always, I found them always weird. Um, they never really fit the logical way I was thinking about Home Assistant. And then that's actually gonna change. Well, it sort of changes in the way that events now are going to be entities. So that means that they can be represented and we can see the visual state of them in Home Assistant without waiting for a doorbell to be pressed, for example. 
The event and the time recording is only supported by a few of the manufacturers or few of the integrations. For example, HomeKit devices, which covers quite a lot, MQTT, also a big uh, part of the ecosystem, and Philips Hue, which do have a fair amount of devices and integrations. Many more will come soon. Now, hold on a second, don't click off this video because there's one more bonus feature that I really, really love. I was actually shocked when I actually read this that we can actually do this in Home Assistant. Now we can actually generate images thanks to AI within Home Assistant. If you wanna find out more about this feature and do a bit of a deep dive, then click on this video over here. I'll see you in that video.